Hello and welcome to episode 159 of the Hamcorp Training Manual. In this episode, we quickly set up the Mark III space assemblers and then move on to the main topic of the episode, QGP automation. Like Magmatter, there aren't many guides on QGP automation and I haven't seen an automation method that works this way, so I'm quite proud of my creation. Enjoy! GigaChat tokens are done. My Mark III space assemblers are done, which I need to set up and also provide adequate power to because they all run at UXV with 64 parallels. This also needs the Mark V motors, which are done. So I've got these as well. And I am currently crafting up 1,588 UXV emitters for the third Godforged ring. This should be done in about seven or eight hours, which is uh, a pretty long wait. But I have some stuff to do now. I have to set up uh, my motors and my space assemblers. Oh, I'm also making more nanites. I just noticed that. Yeah, another 16 mil universium. That's like 20 hours-ish. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to be waiting on these two crafts a lot. So maybe I should cancel them so I can do other stuff right now. I don't know. I haven't decided. I need to do a bit of planning. Oh, wait, look at that. The Giga Chad quest gives me a Chad princess and Chad drone. Well, that's going straight in the trash, but oh my god, it is crazy to see the first of the Stargate quests unlocked. And I had a realization between episodes that because this is 2.7, I don't get an extra set of Stargates at the end, and I'm, I don't know if I'm going to upgrade at this point. It seems a little silly to upgrade, so I don't know. You know, maybe I should anyway, even if 2.8.1 is not out yet at the time of recording, because... Uh, Soon-ish, I think I'll be able to upgrade my antimatter forges to use MHD CSM, and then it's gonna need a lot of antimatter in the buffers. Meaning, uh, these might not be fast enough with just acceleration cards anymore, so I would need the super luminal ones, and that requires 2.8. So, so maybe I'll end up upgrading anyway. So, yeah. Well, the reason I bring that up is because I was like, if I only build one Stargate, I won't be able to turn it on. So I'm gonna have to build two. But in 2.8, the final quest gives you another Stargate, so you just need to make one. So I think I will just make one and upgrade to 2.8 because, like, what's the point in making two Stargates? It's not really hard. It's just I'm just waiting. I would just have to wait twice as long, right? And yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't see the point in doing that. Anyway, I am going to set up my space assemblers and I'm going to start crafting some stuff in the background. And then we can get around to automating QGP. Because, as you're aware, I'm going to need quite a bit of QGP. Almost a billion QGP. Actually, that's not as much as I thought it would be. That's probably not too bad. Alright, space assemblers. Now, I am curious to see how much faster the space assembly is. I remember optically compatible memory being a real trouble point. And, let's see. Ooh, 2000 per 5 seconds per module. Oh my god, that is much faster than it used to be. I don't even remember how fast it used to be. I think it used to be like 256 per 20 seconds or something ridiculous like that. Oh, this is big. This is big, but um, it still might not be fast enough, so I might have to build another space elevator or three. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll see. I'm gonna get started on uh, QGP. I do already have the module installed. It's just not uh, not doing anything. It just exists, that's all. So let's see. It's basically the same or very similar to how the mag matter automation works. There's just a lot more fluids and plasmas I need to keep in stock. Hmm, I'll find a solution. It's probably gonna be like this one. Well, maybe not, we'll see. Well, that actually wasn't so bad. Uh, it took a while for me to come up with this, but I think this works pretty well. It's, I think, a little bit faster than my Magmatter automation as well. And it's not quite so jank. It doesn't rely on the recipe check time. This this just puts in the actual exact amount correctly. And in fact, a part of this uh, could be used in the Magmatter automation to make it a bit faster. So maybe I'll swap it out at some point. Because it was pointed out to me in the comments of the Magmatter video that I have basically been using these subnets as comparators which is funny. I didn't even think of that. And like, I'm not really good at vanilla Minecraft redstone stuff. I rely heavily on Project Red and AE2 and everything. So yeah, vanilla Minecraft interactions are always something that I'm not going to be good at. 
or at least right now there's something I'm not good at. Anyway, let's talk about QGP. Red subnet is mainnet. Yellow subnet is uh, the, what do we call it? The output handler, I guess. And then there's a light blue subnet and also a fluid subnet. So there's four subnets, but two of them are very, very simple. Let's start with uh, what happens on, where do we start? Let's start with how the multi works. I don't think I ever explained it. I explained it in the Magmatter video, but I should do it again. So the way this multi works is every cycle at the beginning, it's going to output seven different materials. The possible materials are listed over here. And there's a lot. <laughs> It's too many. I don't see the point of having this many, but it's fine. So there are 10 possible fluid outputs and I don't know, like 40, uh, 50, 60, 70, 70 possible item outputs. Now the amounts will be randomized. I don't remember exactly. I think the fluid output is going to be between one and 64 liters of each of the fluids. And the item outputs will be between one and six or seven or something like that of the uh, of the dust outputs. Now, my current setup is not complete because I didn't want to go through 70 different dusts and encode them manually. I mean, I have to, but I didn't want to. So I, I'll do that over time. But the, the general process is still here and it's and it works. So let's talk about let's talk about the dusts first, I think. So the dusts come out of this ME output bus, sorry, MV output bus, not ME. This is a, an analog output bus actually. And what I have here, hold on, this flickering is bothering me. Okay, shaders off for a little bit. Anyway, what I have here is an item conduit and a redstone conduit, which I don't think I need, but it like flashes on and off, which is nice for troubleshooting because it shows me that it works. But I have an item conduit here set to extract with redstone and very importantly, there is an item conduit speed downgrade. What this does is it makes it pull exactly one dust out per operation instead of four, which is the default. That dust goes into an LUV machine hull. This can be any tier of machine hull. I just had a bunch of LUV, so I used one. And on top of this LUV machine hull is an item detector cover set to one inverted and all slots. And this is really weird and kind of niche information that uh, machine hulls can store items. I don't understand why. I don't know why. I think it's for like clean room automation or something, but who does this? Anyway, me, I guess. So <laughs> one at a time, each of the dusts will get pulled out. And as soon as one dust is in here, this will stop outputting a signal and this uh, item conduit will stop working. So basically this pulls out one dust at a time. Now over here on the left, I have a couple of slightly larger chests. And each of these are stocked with exactly eight of nine different types of dusts. I'm missing one dust here because of an issue I will <laughs> elaborate on shortly. But all the other chests, they all have one full row of exactly eight of the various types of dusts that could potentially come out of the output bus here. And the way I'm doing that is I have a low voltage item regulator. It's just called low voltage regulator. And in this middle three by three, you can set the number and type of items you want to store in the target inventory. And over here on the right, you need to configure the, the slot of that inventory into which these items go. So for example, in this case, tin dust goes into slot zero, palladium dust goes into slot one, and cesium dust goes into slot two. And that matches here what you see in the slightly larger chest. The regulator is going to source these dusts in its input through this conveyor module, which connects to an interface which is stocking these dusts. So basically my main net is putting dusts into this regulator and the regulator is putting eight dusts into the slightly larger chest. It is very important that this is exactly eight, not more, not less, because this yellow subnet, which uh, is not painted, let me paint this really quick. This yellow subnet leads over here to an advanced stocking input bus. This thing has auto pull on but if you right click this button, this little interface pops up and this is extremely important. You need to set the minimum stack size to nine and the slot refresh time to as low as possible. So I've set it to one tick, which is usually a bad idea, but this is a small subnet and I think it's fine. What this means is the advanced stocking input bus will only pull items on the subnet when there are nine or more of that item. So you can see what happens here. I have eight of every item and then 
As soon as one item is added to this machine hull, through the storage bus, the yellow subnet becomes aware of it, and then that one dust becomes nine. So for example, in this case, I have one niobium dust. I haven't stocked it in here. So uh, let's do that really quick. Niobium dust into this slot, and I can stock my niobium in this interface. And then it pulls the niobium, puts the niobium in, and then this machine comes on like that. Now, the reason we want it to be nine is because of how the QGP multi works. For each dust that is output, you must return nine ingots worth of plasma back into the machine. So for each niobium dust that came out, this machine turned on smelting nine of the dusts into plasma. And if there were six dusts in there, that means this operation happened six times. What happens then, of course, is the plasma comes out of the output hatch into this light blue subnet where it's just immediately put into a storage cell. And this storage cell is auto pulled into the machine. And as soon as there are the correct amounts of seven different plasmas, the machine will turn on. So that happens for every single dust, one at a time, except there is one dust that is problematic, curium dust. Curium dust is not craftable. The only way to get curium dust in the game right now in 2.7.4 is as part of this exoticizer puzzle. <laughs> so my automation will break any time curium dust needs to be uh, plasmified. That's the word now. The way you're supposed to get around this in 2.7 is by instead using molten curium, which you can fuse, and then uh, putting that through the plasma fab. But I don't want to do all that extra effort just for one type of dust. So I'm just going to update to 2.8, which means a little bit more ham corp for you guys, because I need to automate netherite and all of that other stuff. Because in 2.8, you can macerate curium ingots into curium dust. But for some reason in 2.7, that's not an option. I even tried it. I thought it might be like a hidden recipe in NEI, but no, it, it just doesn't work. You can put curium ingots in a macerator and nothing happens. And I did also check the small and tiny dusts. There's no way to get those either. So that's the item half of QGP. The fluid half is a sort of similar, but a little bit different. There are 10 possible fluids and I have them stored here in these super tanks. I have exactly 999 of these fluids stored in each super tank. And the way that's done is this is the same setup on each tank, but on the top, I have a machine controller cover. On the left, I have a fluid detector cover set to 999 and inverted. And on the back, I have a fluid regulator set to import conditional 999 every eight ticks. Eight ticks is just from playtesting. I don't think it really needs to be eight ticks necessarily, but uh, for safety, I made it a little bit slow. So basically what happens is anytime there is less than 999 fluid in the tank, it will essentially request more through the regulator. The regulator pulls from a dual interface, which is stocking the fluid on the main net. So there's 999 of each of the fluids in these 10 tanks. And this tank over here, which is out to the side, is where the output fluid goes for the puzzle. So in this case, I've already processed it all. But say, for example, I got, I don't know, 30 mercury. 30 liters of mercury would be sitting in here. Now on this yellow subnet, there are storage buses that can see the mercury in here or whatever fluid it is. And it can also see all 10 of these super tanks with 999. And all the way over here, very similar to the advanced stocking input bus, I have an advanced stocking input hatch with the same setup, except the minimum amount is a thousand. So anytime there is more than a thousand fluid in this subnet, in the yellow subnet, then it will process it into plasma. And since the minimum recipe size for all of the plasmas is more than like one liter, it's like 250 liters or 500 liters or something, this is kind of safe. So with our example of mercury, there's 999 mercury in here. There's 30 mercury in here. That means there's 1,029 mercury in total on the yellow subnet. So what happens is 1,000 gets processed in the plasma fab and fed into the machine, leaving us with 29. And this has now gone below 999 liters. It should be at zero, right? Because it pulls all of this out and one from here. Now, I know what you're thinking. Maybe it pulls all of this and less from this, but this is safe against that too. I'll explain in a sec. But so it pulls 999 out, which means this is empty. So the redstone signal comes on and it pulls in another 999 from the main net. So now I have 1,028 in total. 1,000 gets processed. Repeat, I have 1,027. Repeat, I have 1,026 and so on. Until this is at zero, 
in which case this will be at 999 again, and that's not enough to trigger the plasma fabrication. Now, what I mentioned before about what if it just takes all of this fluid and uh, leaves behind some fluid in here, that's also fine because let's say there's 30 in here and 999, right? 30 liters get consumed from the quantum tank and 970 liters get consumed from the super tank. That leaves 29 liters in here, which is less than 999. So the regulator pulls in 999 again. That puts us over 1,000 and, you know, repeat. It just works. Now, I know in 2.8, there are uh, restricted item and fluid cells for AE2, which could be used in place of all this, but I've automated this in 2.7. And the only reason I want to upgrade to 2.8 right now is for curium. And I said I would, but honestly, even now, I'm kind of, eh, maybe I could just come back and reset the machine anytime it's curium. Because I don't need that much QGP. I only need like 2 billion. So maybe it's fine. I don't know. I'm still on the fence about it because it feels a bit silly to upgrade so late. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. But yeah, this is my QGP automation. Oh, and also this final little bit here. Uh, QGP, we don't want this to go into this tank ever. It comes out of the same output hatch, right? So what I've done is I have filtered this to, to QGP and put an inverter card here, which means QGP is the only thing that is not allowed to go into this tank. And instead, it must go into this fluid storage bus, which leads back to the main net. And so far, I have 2.5 million QGP, but um, I would have more. The only thing is I need to encode some more of these dusts into the regulators. I've just been doing them as they appeared so I could test this properly. And I am quite confident in this setup. Now, I have another couple of problems to deal with. Um, and they're all because of the eyes of Harmony and Astral Arrays, pretty much. So... My fluid storage is full. My item storage is nearly full. My dust overflow storage is about half full. This is not good either. And I'm getting really tired of encoding a digital singularity for each dust. So I think it's time I make some artificial universe cells. These are basically digital singularities, but they're the multi-type versions. So this can hold five types and basically almost a limitless amount of fluid, as far as I can tell. <laughs> and uh, same thing for the items. So I'm gonna make a couple of these and overhaul my storage system because the Eyes of Harmony just generate way too much dust and I should probably start throwing it away. But I don't wanna, it feels silly. Thank you for watching this episode of the Hamcorp Training Manual. In the next episode, we will continue scaling infrastructure and start the final push towards Stargate. If I decide to upgrade to 2.8, I will instead work on the netherite line, but I may not upgrade. The board has not yet decided Hamcorp's fate. The remaining Hamcorp training manual episodes may take quite a long time to produce due to the extremely long wait times of this stage of the game, but we've almost done it, employees. See you next time.